In this video, we're going to take a look at a really cool plugin from GSAP called Flip. And at this point in time, this is a free plugin, so you should be able to follow along with me in this video. Now, GSAP Flip is all about seamlessly transitioning elements on your web page between two different states. And it makes certain transitions that would normally be very difficult to accomplish a whole lot easier to pull off. Here's an example of the Flip plugin in action. This is from a code pen from Chris Coyer. And here we have a mini gallery. And on the top, you can see we have a larger featured image. And then we have these two images on the bottom. And you can check out what happens when I click on one of these images on the bottom. So I'll click on this one first. And you see that seamless transition, how it now becomes the larger featured image. I'll go ahead and click on this one. And you can see again that transition to become the featured image. Here's another example using the Flip plugin. This is from a code pen from Ryan Mulligan. And for example, if I click on box number one, notice what happens. You see it gets moved out of its containing box all the way down to the right in the shopping cart. So the Flip plugin is going to give us the ability to create these seamless transitions. And we're going to get into some code right now, and you're going to see exactly how it works. So I'm here in my code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, I've already created my example, and I'm going to be walking you through it in this video. On the left, I have my index.html file. On the right, I have my JavaScript file called app.js. And because this is a simple example, I'm writing my style tags right here in the head of my index.html file. Now, if you've been following this channel, you know that with these introductory videos, I like to use simple examples so that we can really see the basic principles of how to work with a library or a plugin. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this blue box, and when we click on the document, we're going to have a transition and reparent itself in this containing div here on the right, which is rotated 30 degrees. So let me show you if I click on the document. So let's get started now installing the GSAP core and the Flip plugin and see just how easy it is to make this transition happen. The first step will be to come to this GSAP installation page and you can scroll down to about the middle of the page. And here you'll see the GSAP 3 install helper. And under this CDN tab where it says extra plugins, let's click on Flip. And now you can see we've got the two script tags that we need. The first one is the GSAP core library and the second one is for the Flip plugin. So we can click on copy code here. And then in your code editor, at the bottom of your index.html page, right before your very own app.js file, you can paste those two script tags, which I've already done here on lines 24 and 25. In terms of our HTML elements, we only have two. We have two divs, one that has a class of container, and then one that has a class of box. And here are the styles for those. The box has a width and a height of 100 pixels and a blue background color. And you can see that box here on the left. And then our container is that box on the right, which just has a border, a width and a height of 200 pixels, some margin left and margin top. And here is where we rotate it 30 degrees, minus 30 degrees. So once again, you can see it here. So now here's where the real fun starts. This is where we get into our JavaScript. So let me expand this app.js window. And here on the first line, you can see we have gsap.register plugin, and we pass in flip. So this is just a thing that you do with all GSAP plugins, where you register them first. And then after that, on lines 3 and 4, you can see we're getting references to the container and the box element, which are our HTML elements here, because those are the ones that we're going to be working with. But it's really here on lines 7 through 9, where we're really working with the Flip plugin. And I'm going to explain exactly what these lines do, but first let's just back up for a second and look at Flip conceptually. So what you should know is that FLIP is the name of the plugin, but it's also an acronym, and it's an acronym that represents an animation technique. This acronym was coined by a developer, Paul Lewis, and what the acronym stands for is FIRST, LAST, INVERT, and PLAY. FLIP. So let's break each one of these down. So first, we'll start with FIRST. So the first thing that we're going to do with flip is we're going to get the initial state of the element. And there's a method that the flip plugin gives us called getState. What this is going to do is essentially record the initial rotation, size, position, and skew of the element. The next step of the process is going to be last. What this means is that we're going to do something to the element to put it into its last state, its final state. 
In this example here, we're adding a class using the classless method. And that added class could do various things to the element, like changing its size, its rotation, its position, etc. For another example of a last state would be something where we reparent the element. Here, for example, we could take a container element and use the append child method and reparent that element. And then finally, we'll look at invert and play. Here, the flip plugin gives us a method called from. And this is going to take two arguments. The first one is going to be the state, or that initial state that we recorded. And the second one is going to be an options object. And if you're familiar with GSAP, the options object is going to contain various properties that you've probably used before, things like duration and easing, for example. This flip.from method is really where the magic happens, because it basically makes the transition happen for us automatically. Basically, during these invert and play stages, since flip already knows about the initial state, and it also knows about the final state of the element, what it does is it applies offsets to the element to make it appear first in its initial state, and then it animates the removal of those offsets to transition it to its final state. So with this overview in mind, let's dive back into VS Code now, and let's make it happen. Back here in VS Code, in our app.js file, we're looking at line 6 now, and here we have document.addEventListener, where we're adding a click event type. And this just allows us to click on the document so we can initiate that state change. Here, lines 7 through 9, those are the stages that we just talked about. The first, last, invert, and play. So here on line 7, this is our first stage. This is where we're getting the state, and we're getting the state of that box div. Right, because that's the one that's going to be repositioned and reparented. So we're saying let state equals flip.getState and passing in the class a box. Now line 8 is going to contain the last state. What you can see here is that we're reparenting the element. Right, so we're taking the container element, which is that rotated box on the right, and we're using the append child method to append that box element to that container. We'll examine this a little bit on the console in a second, but basically, if you look here in my HTML, what's going to happen is that this div with the class of box, once we click on our document, it's going to disappear from here in the DOM, and essentially, it's going to be placed here within the container element. And that's reparenting. But let's go back to the way that we had it, and let's look at the last stage, which is the invert and play stages. Here we're using flip.from. And all we have to do is pass in the state, which is the initial state of the box, and then we can pass in whatever GSAP options we want. Now there's many other options that we can put in here, but for this example I'm keeping it real simple, and I'm simply setting the tween duration to be 1, and I'm giving it an easing value of power1.out. So let's go back to the browser, and let's check out that transition. So let's click on the document, and you can see how that blue box moves into this container div. Now, like I said, we would check it out in the console. So let's go into our Elements tab. And let's refresh the page. And let me make this a little bit bigger. So here you can see we have our div with the class of container. And then we have our box here. Now I'm going to click on the document one more time and watch what happens here. Watch how this box disappears and it gets placed in the container. So here I go. You see it disappeared. And then if we expand the container div, here's the box. So I've kept it real simple here for the sake of providing an introduction to the GSAP Flip plugin and what it can do and how it works. But I have a whole bunch of really cool examples which I can show. And if there's interest, let me know in the comments down below and I'll produce some more videos on the Flip plugin. By the way, I have a new course available on using GSAP and Scroll Trigger to really enhance your websites. In the course, we dive into a concept called Scrolly Telling. And if you haven't heard about Scrolly Telling, you're definitely going to want to check it out. You'll find the link down below in the description and the comments section. Now, if you haven't done so yet, also subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments down below what other GSAP or Scroll Trigger topics you'd like to see covered. See you next time.